Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Sophie Erber. Hours after signing what's now being called the American Rescue Plan into law, President Joe Biden will make his first national address tonight. This on the one year anniversary of COVID-19 being declared a pandemic. KCAU 9's Washington correspondent Trevor Shirley has the latest now for us in our top story at five. Well, earlier this afternoon, President Biden signed into law the American Rescue Plan. That's the $1.9 trillion COVID-19 relief package that Congress passed yesterday. With the bill signing, millions of Americans will soon feel the law's benefits. The administration says in some cases by the end of the month, including $1,400 stimulus checks for many Americans, plus money for vaccine distribution and small business assistance. Yesterday, Congress passed the plan, which is now the president's first major legislative victory. But for all his talk of unity and bipartisanship, the final vote came down without GOP support. Republicans say the package is too expensive and contains too much that's unrelated to COVID relief. This historic legislation is about rebuilding the backbone of this country and giving people in this nation, working people, middle class folks, uh, people who built the country a fighting chance. That's what the essence of it is. This wasn't a bill to finish off the pandemic. It was a multi-trillion dollar Trojan horse full of bad old liberal ideas. And tonight, President Biden will make his first primetime address to mark the one year anniversary of the pandemic. He's expected to talk about the lives lost to COVID-19 and the ways Americans have risen to confront the virus, along with give some idea as to when life may return to normal, whatever that looks like going forward. And the president's address tonight is expected to happen around 8 o'clock Eastern time here in Washington from the White House. In Washington, Trevor Shirley, KCAU 9 News. Governor Christy Nome today also recognized how long it's been since the virus first struck South Dakota. Yesterday marked the one-year anniversary since our first COVID cases in the state of South Dakota. It also, sadly, is the one-year anniversary of our first reported COVID death in the state. We responded by adapting to those challenges and by finding new ways to take care of folks and to problem solve and get through that challenging situation. On Tuesday of this week, Governor Nome signed a bill revising telehealth provisions. Senate Bill 96 now allows South Dakotans some greater flexibility with receiving their health care. And the relief deal signed by President Biden today includes tax cuts to low- and middle-income families who were unemployed at some point in 2020. More than 40 million people filed for unemployment that year, and unemployment benefits are generally counted as taxable sources of income. But a provision added by the American Rescue Plan allows up to $10,200 in unemployment benefits to be tax-free for singles who made under $75,000 or couples who made under $150,000. Basically what that means, if you've already filed your taxes, you would have already, that would have already been considered taxable income to you when your taxes were filed. So now what we have to think about is how do we fix this? Coming up tonight at six, KCAU 9's Lydia Vasquez explains what you need to know before filing your taxes or what you can do if you've already filed. Appointments are still open for the next Woodbury County Vaccine Clinic. Siouxland District Health Department will be distributing the vaccine at the Mary J. Tralia House. That's now set for March 17th, uh, Wednesday. The number to call and schedule an appointment is 712-258-5137. That information, again, is on our website. Well, warmer weather is an invitation for many of us to do a little bit of outdoor work for the Iowa Department of Transportation. It also means road maintenance. Siouxlanders can expect to see some roads resurfaced and also some streetlights upgraded around Sioux City. This as the DOT wraps up projects from last year. For the around the city of Sioux City, as far as construction, um, there will be, we'll do some pavement markings on I-29 that didn't get completed last year. Other than that, there be some maintenance work around where uh, there'll be some you know, lane closure here and there. But. Learn where the DOT will be focusing their projects in this story posted on our website right now. That's at SiouxlandProud.com or the free KCAU 9 mobile news app. It's time now for our first check on the weather. Meteorologist Marcus Beasley standing by. Marcus, uh, I don't know if it was just me, but today felt warmer, uh, at least here in Sioux City. 
Yeah, the sunshine helps a lot when we have temperatures in the 50s. It's a little cool, but you add in the sunshine and it really helps things feel a little bit nicer outside. Not a bad day at all today for early to mid-March. We're getting near mid-March, which is kind of wild. 52 degrees in Sioux City for your high temperature today. 51 in Wayne, 53 in Norfolk, 47 in Yankton, 50 in Lamars, and Storm Lake today. So, yeah, a little cool, but not bad at all. Still above average. Overnight tonight, we'll see temperatures drop into the upper 20s. So, again, a few degrees below freezing tonight. It does look like winds will be on the light side tonight. And as we head into tomorrow, more nice weather. But this week, Weekend is looking like it is going to be pretty rainy. Details on all of that in the 9 on 9. Sophie. All right, thanks, Marcus. A teacher and staff member at Bishop Healing Catholic School has got a little pie in their faces today, but it was all in the name of charity for Make-A-Wish Iowa. Students chose the lucky winners by putting cash donations in six different jars. Their prize, of course, getting pied in the face. Good sports. Each year, Healing students present a check to Make-A-Wish to a Make-A-Wish child. All that money raised during the event will go towards that nonprofit, a good cause. When you think of independent filmmaking, Lyons, Nebraska might not be the first place that comes to your mind. But there's a man living there who might just convince you otherwise. Meet Bill Hedges in this week's edition of Siouxland Stories. This story begins with a gift. Yeah, this is my camera I got for uh, from a high school graduation that started all my Super 8 and Kodak. And I'd make a little shorts, do stop frame animations. Today, Bill Hedges is a retired postal worker, but still making films. And it's not just a passion project. He turned his vision into a reality. I, I started uh, this series uh, because I had uh, built a, a partial interior of a spaceship from Lost in Space in my basement. And I thought it'd be kind of fun to film that, but that was also a little bit limiting. So I, I was kind of looking around for uh, another building where I could build some exterior sets like the exterior of this spaceship. And that led him to the former Lions Theater, a part of his future, but already a part of his past. It was one that I used to work at when I was a kid as a projectionist. And uh, as soon as I came down here, I ended up buying it, this, you know, that same day. This is where I'd watch a lot of the movies, uh, through this window right here. Bill was even able to get the original projectors back. And yes, they still work. So you'd step on this switch here, foot switch, and that would open the aperture on this machine, close the aperture on the other machine, and then you'd... Uh, throw this switch here to change the sound from one machine over to the other. Relics from the days when this building was a theater that might have ended up on the cutting room floor. So you'd splice that together. I bought a, you know, a few rows of seats and you know some wall covering and even the marquee I pulled down because I figured they would just take it to the dump. I think I've always liked uh, museums and you know curating uh, you know, this is my way of curating, you know, part of the things around lions and, you know, things I really enjoy. Today, that marquee sign sits in Bill's garage. He hopes to hang it on the building outside his studio someday soon. And while he might have the space now to do what he loves, he still has to wear a lot of hats. Everything from writing the scripts to building the sets, making the costumes and even the props. Bill does it all. The uh, transformer, that actually came from the uh, marquee. Yeah, from this theater, because it generates 15,000 volts across there. You know, the set construction is, you know, fairly easy for me, and uh, I, you know, I had to learn to, uh, you know, build other things too, you know, related to filmmaking, but uh, a lot of things on YouTube you can use to, you know, research that, so. These days you'll find Bill and his cats, Judy and Penny, working hard on set. My series Cosmic Cat came about because, uh, well, I, I do like cats and, you know, sci-fi, so I thought I'd combine the two into a series. And the reason, you know, my cat and I, uh, Penny, is the, are the main characters in it, mainly because uh, uh, there, it's a long-term series, and I figure that we're the only ones that could commit to that long of series. And even his cats have stunt doubles. <laughs> The set in his basement is so realistic, it's easy to forget you're inside a home built in 1906. And the screening room he built is so complete, even the slope of the floor matches that of the original Lions Theater. 
So while many people kick back and relax in their retirement years, for Bill, it's all a labor of love that really isn't a labor at all. It's not really work to me. I actually uh, uh, really enjoy it. It's like a playground for me. So, you know, where, you know, some people would like to, you know, kind of have a nice boat and go fishing or, you know, golf. This is, you know, what I'm passionate about and really enjoy. And I, you know, look forward to coming down here and making films. Now you can watch this story again anytime on our website. And as always, if you know someone with a unique story, we'd like for you to share it with us. It's easy to do. Email us at the address there on your screen, news at kcautv.com, so the rest of Siouxland can hear about them too. Well, powerlifting is traditionally a men's sport, at least in the past, but a pair of high school girls are raising the bar literally. We'll see how coming up. And today, even though it was a little cooler, still above average, it looks like a very wet weekend ahead. And temperatures, they're going to cool down into the 40s for highs. Details on all of that after the break. You're watching KCAU 9 News with Sophie Erber and meteorologist Marcus Beasley. This is KCAU 9 News at 5. Ahead next week compared to where we have been. And here's a picture sent in from a viewer driving through Omaha. Beautiful sunset. This was sent in from Erica Dunn. Um, not quite sure where she's at, but close to Siouxland. And uh, I'm sure many of you have seen sunsets like that in Siouxland. If you have any pictures to send our way, sunsets, wildlife, uh, maybe just anything outside, uh, go to SiouxlandProud.com and send your pictures. Nature shots in general. Yeah. All right, thanks a lot, Marcus. Well, a small donation is getting big thanks tonight. A one boy's generosity toward saving a retired ship is touching hearts. That story's coming up. But first, two girls doing some serious heavy lifting at their high school. Now how they're making a place for themselves in the weight room next. When most people think of making movies, Lions, Nebraska probably isn't the first location that comes to mind. But Bill Hedges might just change that. Join me as we tour his studio and talk about all things cinema on the next Siouxland Story tonight on KCAU 9 News. This is KCAU 9 News. A female duo is doing some heavy lifting, proving girls can do anything these boys can do. Jessica Rank shows us how the two are defying odds and breaking down barriers inside the gym. The Wiley High School doghouse during fall season workouts is nothing short of intense. 25 or 10. Now this spring, it's relatively the same, but this time, joining the men on the racks are Marissa Machetto and Briley Ross. I started coming to the gym after school or just working out during the week. Machetto says she lifts weights for volleyball. I've always just enjoyed lifting. But it wasn't until a day with the boys when she started pushing the pounds. That kind of like gave me some motivation to like, oh, how much can I lift? How much more can I go? The powerlifting team started at Wiley last year, but there weren't any girls on the platform. None of the girls really wanted to do it. That is until now. I was like, oh, heck yeah. Ross and Machetto, two of just four girls in the sport. But the sophomores say it doesn't matter. It's like a little friend group or a little family that we get to lift together. The two started lifting together in November. I went from not being able to lift a 45. Now it's like I'm up to like squatting 270. The high numbers earning both a spot in the state competition. My goal was like, I want to go to state. It was I want to lift more than this girl just so I can go. Their coach Tim Maskell says he hopes their success will inspire more girls to do the same. Well, with just a pocket change to spare, a young boy gave it all to help out a retired ship. But in return, he got a big reward. We'll explain what it was next. In an effort to save a retired Navy ship, one four-year-old made a donation of literally nickels and dimes. It was a gesture that deeply moved the man in charge of the fundraising campaign. Abby Friedman shares the story. Every child his age should grow up like that. That's all I have to say. Douglas Jamal said he wanted a chance to meet the boy responsible for donating his spare change to the Naval Park. In a special ceremony, a U.S. flag was presented along with a copy of the Constitution to Arrow for his donation. You stop and think his heart and soul of what he has done in this little fella here. One of our greatest new young patriots for this country. Jamal is leading the charge for the $1 million fundraising effort to restore the Naval Park. He says every donation helps, which is why Arrow's spare change meant the world. And may we all pitch together and show what kind of good neighbors we are and support the USS Sullivan 
to the restoration that it deserves. Arrow's grandmother said he was worried the USS Sullivan would sink before he got the chance to go on board. So the contents of his piggy bank were quickly moved to a plastic bag and dropped off to the park. You've done a great job educating him. You've inspired him to the fact that he actually donated some money. And in fact, he came today with a second delivery of money. Most of all, this thoughtful action gave Arrow a new friend for life. Anything this boy ever needs is coming from me. A sweet gesture taking a live look outside right now on a sunny night in Sioux Center. Marcus returns right after the break with one more check on your forecast. Before we wrap up here at 5, let's check in first with Tim for what's coming up at 6. Hi, Tim. Hey, good afternoon on a Thursday, Sophie. Uh, South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem today expressing some concerns. That over the uh, status of medical marijuana in her state. We'll take a closer look at why she's concerned coming up. That's at 6 o'clock. Also tonight, just ahead as another tax deadline nears. Some folks are waiting and taking a closer look before filing, and for good reason. Under a federal provision, the first $10,200 in unemployment is non-taxable at the federal level. Folks, though, waiting to see what happens with Siouxland states. We'll also check that out. And there will be an all Siouxland Class 2A championship game at the Iowa Boys State Basketball Tournament. Number one, Boyden Hull, and number two, Western Christian, advancing this afternoon to the Friday afternoon championship game. Jake has much more from today's game. That's coming up after World News tonight. Congratulations to those two basketball crazy communities. Also, Sergeant Bluff with a chance to advance later tonight as well, Sophie, into a championship game and games being played in uh, Nebraska and South Dakota. It is tournament time across the two land. Pretty cool. We really must yeah. breed great basketball players here. Uh, they're, mm -hmm. they're doing so well at the state yeah. tournament. The girls did well last week, too, and uh, we're doing great in the weather department, uh, although uh, things will be changing this weekend, so enjoy tonight. Yeah, enjoy tonight. Tomorrow we're going to see temperatures a little bit warmer than what we'll see by this weekend. 55 degrees tomorrow, this weekend, especially Sunday, looking pretty rainy. Thanks, Marcus. Thank you for joining us. We hope you'll join us again at 6. Until then, have a great night, everyone.